belly fat. Do a search on the internet and what do you find? Belly fat burners, best diet for belly fat, best exercise for belly fat. Get rid of belly fat in a week. Sorry, can't do that. <laughs> if you're a woman over 40, carry your postmenopausal, this video is for you. I have a special guest with me today. I'm going to give you three practical things that are going to help you target that belly fat. You ready? Stay tuned. Hey, this is Neely with Neely on Nutrition, registered dietitian nutritionist and a certified health coach. And I have a good friend of mine today, Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe is an author, a speaker, a podcaster with the podcast Energize Your Life. Talk to me about belly fat. Again, thinking also of my, uh, my audience, which is mostly women, peri and postmenopausal women. Well, you know, we have that stuff, and this is a shirt, this isn't my fat, but you know, we have fat that's hanging down there. We've got maybe the jiggly thighs. I mean, let's face it, we're not perfect when we get into our later years. We're all trying to get better, but not perfect. There's no such thing as perfect, as you know, unless they airbrush it, because nobody really has that kind of perfect body. But um, yeah, what I'm really concerned with is the stuff that's marbled around those abdo abdominal organs, because that's the dangerous fat that's increasing your risk for heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and even increases your risk for dementia. And people sometimes think of belly fat. They think of like, here's your muscle, and then on top of your muscle, there's this fat. It's not really like that, is it? Well, there might be some fat on top of there, but yeah, we're talking about that fat that's marbled. It's you know, kind of like you cut open a steak and you can see the, all the fat in between all the muscle fibers. Yeah, we're talking about that kind of stuff that happens. The stuff you can't pinch, the stuff that you know, doesn't seem to move a lot, that's what I'm concerned with. And if you, you know, measure your waist and your waist circumference is say more than 35 inches for women, more than 40 inches for men, you likely have an you know, excessive amount of belly fat. Yeah. And I think that's really a good indication is, is looking at waist circumference versus like a number on the scale. All right, so what's the, um, we're talking about three things. And by the way, we're, we've got a bonus tip for you too. So make sure you stay to the end and hear that bonus tip. Okay, the first one, what's the first one you wanna talk about? Okay, so when I was talking about this belly fat in a recent podcast episode of mine, I mentioned three things. The first one is to reset your calorie intake. And I don't want people to get stuck on this because they automatically think, oh, I have to eat less, okay? The other two might be more important for you, but let's face it, many of us are sort of mindless about how we eat and we haven't the foggiest idea of what we're eating and, you know, is it nutritious foods? Are they foods that are making us feel full and energized? Or are they fun foods that we're eating too much of. So I always just tell people, I mean, it's not about counting calories, it's just about becoming conscious of calories, perhaps. Right when you find out that coffee drink has 400, 450 calories, and you say, oh my gosh, that's one quarter of my day's allotment, and all it is is sugar and fat, probably not the best way to spend my calories. So it's really about awareness. It is. It's about awareness, and to be conscious We've talked about this before. You know that I don't have my clients count calories. We work much more on that um, um, mindfulness of eating, hunger and fullness, right. and so forth. But just to give an idea, I mean, somebody may, if they stay the, the same height and weight over 30 years, you know, at 55 years old versus 25 years old, she's going to be burning 150 calories less than she did when she was 25. Yet maybe, and and, and that's what the same amount of exercise right if you're if you're if you're moving your body less than you did when you were 22 it could be even as much as 300 calories less right we know as we age we lose have a tendency to lose muscle muscle burns more calories than fat and we're going to talk about muscle in a second but we're going to first talk about the second tip that dr joe has and that is what what we're talking about we're talking about practicing more high intensity interval training. So in other words, we're talking about the aerobic exercise that you all do, walking, running, swimming, biking, uh, jump rope, dancing, that type of thing. But we're asking you to kind of crank it up a little bit. Replace some of that slow moving uh, exercise with something that's a quicker pace or what I do is alternate it they tend to burn more of that internal belly fat when they do burn fat. 
So maybe you say, I'm, I'm going to, because, because not everybody has to run. Keep in right. mind, if you're, if you're walking at a strolling pace and that's all you've ever done, maybe just, you know, quicken it up a little bit to get to the telephone pole. Right. You know, and say, when I get to the telephone pole, then I'm going to bring it back down, you know, get my breathing back to a, a rate that's comfortable for me and then speed it up to the next telephone pole. So yeah. it, it's alternating between a, a typical aerobic exercise and a high intensity interval training. So you know, nobody expects you to keep it up at that high level for the long period of time. You know, I use a, a spin class as an example all the time, which I don't particularly care for the spin classes, but that's what they are. You kind of go into the pace and then the instructor as you crank it up. Um, that's but again, but you also bring up something I think really important, and that is even if you're just, you know, doing a little bit more slower pace, three miles an hour, for example, just slower, just ramping it up. So we don't have to be running or spinning or whatever. So wherever you are now, just every few minutes, ramp it up. And, and talk with your medical professional first before you change your exercise routine and make sure that your body, your heart is equipped to be able to manage that. So certainly check with your doctor first. Okay. Okay. Excellent. All right. So that's the second one. What is the third tip that you have for us? The third tip is has to do with our muscle mass because we've talked about how as we age, our metabolism goes down because well, with aging comes the loss of muscle mass. So while that exercise that we've talked about is going to help us to burn a little bit more of that belly fat, and yes, it's going to help us to maintain some of that muscle mass, you've got to increase it as you age. So if you're not doing any kind of resistance exercise, it's important to start doing that twice a week. And I'll tell you, it's a lot simpler than you think it is. People think they need to go to the gym and lift weights with those machines or get the dumbbells out. And sometimes it's as simple as doing something with your body weight. So what would be some examples of doing something with your body weight? Well, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends that you target eight parts of your body. So you've got, you know, you've got your calves, your quadriceps, hamstrings, you've got your, you know, your hips, your lower back, your abs, you've got, you know, your biceps and your triceps. And it's all about targeting specific things. So for example, I use an exer tube, which is an exercise resistance band. Oh, you've got one there. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. so they're about the width of, you know, your finger and it's well, very, very, them, but they come in different, different, um, in, uh, what do you, uh, in resistance. resistance. Thank you. Yes. Yes. All oh, right. Yeah. So the yellow one is fairly light. Then it goes into, I believe, it depends on the brand, but then the green and the red and the blue. And so keep in mind, I, what I recommend is that the average man start with maybe the red and the average woman start with the green, so a light intensity. And you should be able to, so something with the extra tube, you've got the handles on both ends. You know, picture it uh, underneath your feet, grab it with your hands, and maybe do some bicep curls. You can do it while you're watching your favorite TV show. You can do it while you're watching the kids play, you know, whatever is going on. And you want to do some slow reps, 8, 10, 12, something like that, until your arms are like exhausted. And if you say, well, that was easy, you know, you're going too fast, or your resistance isn't extreme enough. And, and with those tubes, I like the way it's adjustable. So, for example, if, if it's too easy to do this, then just put a little bit more of that tube in between your legs. So, in other words, you tighten it up. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah. Shorten it. Right. Shorten the tube. And all of a sudden, now it's a little bit harder. And again, you want to be able to get 8, 10, 12 reps before your arms say, I've had enough. Then give it a break for a minute or two, and then you'll be able to do another set. And you will find that your muscle mass will start to increase. And again, muscles burn more calories and fat, so you get to eat more. My and favorite also part. It can help somebody maintain their weight because if they're doing resistance as they transition into that, you know, that peri postmenopausal, they can maintain their weight versus gaining, you know, having that physical activity going into that stage is ideal, but, uh, but it's it never is. too late to start. Never too late to start. And in, in fact, I have a YouTube video that I called it, you're never too old 
to, to exercise. And it's just videos of people in their 70s and 80s doing gymnastics or swimming or doing um, dancing, things like that. We, it, you're never too old to exercise. And I'm thrilled my mom has gotten into it. So it's like, yay, mom! <laughs> okay. We've got um, being mindful of just calories and not needing to count calories. That's not what it's about. It's just being, it's that awareness of knowing that that frappuccino is 400 calories or whatever it may be. So anyway, it's, it's just being mindful of calories. The second yeah. one was, um, was cardio, but more intensity of cardio, like doing the HIIT, um, high intensity interval training. And the third one is just strength. I mean, and as we age, that is increasingly important. It's just the ability of getting, being able to get up and down out of a chair. And you know what? Something I've learned with my elderly parents and also in-laws, you're absolutely right. The thing that puts people in the nursing home is typically because they can't get off the pot, off the toilet by themselves because they don't have that strength in their legs anymore. Exactly. So doing some squats. So do not raise your toilet. I hear people tell me all the time, I need to raise my toilet. No, you need to be doing some squats to build up that strength. Because even if there's a bar, you still need to have some arm strength to right. be able to lower yourself down. So either way, you need to be working on the exercises. And like I said, it, it doesn't have to be that difficult. When you buy one of those exercise resistance bands, they usually come with a series of exercises that you can do with it. And it can maybe take under 10 minutes twice a week you can oftentimes do it while you're doing something else. So it really doesn't have to take a huge chunk of your time, but you will notice that you'll increase your muscle mass and you'll feel more energized when you do it. Yeah. I'll put a, a note in the, um, in the description too of, of some that I've recommended over the years. So, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we promised we'd have a bonus tip. What is that bonus tip, Joe? Well, you know what, what I've noticed with a lot of women, uh, is that they don't like to eat a lot of protein. And I, I know this because I'm one of those people as well. I would much rather eat my carbs, whether it's potatoes or breads, rice, rather than having a big chunk of any kind of meat, beef, chicken, fish, you know, even the nuts and the seeds. I just prefer that. But the thing is, in order to build muscle mass, which is our aim to increase our metabolism, burn some of that belly fat, We've got to make sure we eat enough protein to incorporate into that muscles. So in other words, when you build muscles, it's a two-step process. And when you're lifting weights, people think you're building muscles, but you're not. You're just breaking down those muscles. Yeah, and it's the, the stage after is when you build it up. And if you don't have that protein available, 20 to 35 grams of protein at, you know, within an hour or two after exercising, How's your body going to build it back up when it doesn't have the building blocks to be able to do that? Right. And what I see a lot of people is they're eating plenty of protein at night, but they're right. exercising first thing in the morning. Well, that protein is no longer available. So make sure after you work out or before, because it's okay to eat breakfast and then exercise because that protein is still available, but you want to eat either before or right after within an hour or so. And you know, that, let's talk about that 20 to 35 grams of protein. Um, right. For example, it could be three eggs or two eggs and an ounce of cheese. It could be a, you know, a scoop or two of protein powder, depending on what kind you get. Yeah. It could be, you know, a piece of meat the size of a deck of cards. That's enough. When I say That's meat, I mean right. beef, chicken, pork, fish, and the like. And I have, um, I've got a handout and I'll put the link in the notes too for 16 high protein breakfast ideas. Because that's one of the biggest things for my women that I work with is getting that morning protein. Because we need, we, like you said, we can't just have like a whole bunch at the end of the day. We need to have it spread out throughout the day. Yeah. And we can only um, utilize so much at a time and not unlimited amounts at, at, at any one time. So anyway. Yeah. I use the example of that sponge. You know, when you put that sponge in water, it can only hold so much water and then the rest drips off. So the same thing when it comes to protein, your body can only utilize a certain amount of protein at any given time. So it's best to have that 20 to 35 grams of protein at breakfast, same amount at lunch and same amount at dinner, rather than having it all at one time during the day. Good point. Excellent. Joe, how can people get in touch with you if they want to get in touch with you? Yeah, you can reach me at my website, drjoe.com. That's D-R, 
jo.com and uh, take a listen at my uh, podcast, which is called Energize Your Life. Excellent. Very good. Always great to have you. We'll chat again soon, I'm sure. And um, thanks for watching Neely on Nutrition, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Belly fat. Do a search on the internet to be seen. Belly fat burner. Best belly fat diet. Nope, 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 nope.